the movie is set in the fall. The heroine named Juno McGuff recalls that everything began with a chair. It was on it that she first became close to Polly Bleeker. The girl's memories are interrupted by the barking of a dog named Banana. Juno heads to the drugstore for a pregnancy test. Despite her hopes, it turns out that the girl is pregnant after all. Not knowing what to do or how to deal with it, or how to survive the event, Juno wanders home upset. The girl throws a noose of hose over the tree, but gets angry at her decision and bites it off. The heroine enters her distinctive, colorful, and detail-filled room, then calls a friend named Leah. The girl is shocked by the news of Juno's pregnancy and suggests an abortion. The heroine realizes that this is the right decision and is going to call the clinic and arrange an appointment. In addition, Juno asks her friend to come to her house and help her with something. Together with Leah, the girl transports the chair and says that she is not in love with Polly at all, although she decided a year ago that she wants to get closer to him. The next day, leaving the house for a jog, the guy runs into Juno, who informs him that she is pregnant. Polly says he is not against abortion, and the girl is both happy and upset. After saying goodbye to her boyfriend, Juno heads to school. Near the box she is bullied by Steve, but the girl knows for sure that he just likes strange girls, and he cannot show it, as he has to fall in love with girls like Leah. Who, meanwhile, falls in love exclusively with teachers. During the lab work, Juno is paired with Polly. Seeing the other couple fighting and being jealous of each other, the girl realizes that she feels nothing of the sort for her buddy. Back home, Juno calls the clinic, after which she reflects on her family. Her father Mac used to be a military man, but now he is an ordinary employee. Her mother left them and now lives in another state with her new husband. Stepmother Bren loves dogs and runs a nail salon. At dinner, the woman asks if Juno threw up in her new vase. The girl realizes that she did, but lies about it. The next day, Juno encounters an opponent of abortion and tries to get away from her moralizing. At the clinic, the heroine fills out a questionnaire and prepares for the appointment. However, due to the stress of other people, Juno escapes from the institution. The girl goes to see Leah and says she can't have an abortion because it's very scary and exciting. Juno decides to have the baby and give it to someone who really needs it. The friends decide to look through the newspapers to find guardians in the classified ads. Juno stops her choice on Mark and Vanessa. Meanwhile, Polly looks at a picture of the heroine in an album. His mom enters the room and informs him that Juno just called him. The next day, the girl decides to tell her parents about her pregnancy. Mac asks who the father of the baby is and laughs when he finds out it's Polly. Bren asks Juno to think again, because pregnancy is very difficult. The woman wants to take care of the doctors and pills, and Mac is ready to go to a meeting with Vanessa and Mark. The next day Juno goes with her father to the future trustees. Vanessa is visibly worried and surprised that the girl found their ad in the newspaper. Juno behaves a little strangely, which shocks the couple. Vanessa offers an open adoption with photos and meetings, but the heroine refuses and wants to just give the baby away and forget about it. Juno says she doesn't need any reward beyond paying for medical services. The girl goes to the bathroom and splashes herself with Vanessa's perfume. Returning, she runs into Mark, and on the stairs she notices a room with guitars. The man says he is passionate about music and his wife let him keep it all in a separate room. Mark used to have his own band, but now he writes music for commercials. Vanessa is concerned about her husband's long absence and goes upstairs to see him playing guitars with Juno. The woman asks them to go back downstairs to finalize things with the lawyer. Having signed the necessary documents, Juno and her father are about to leave. Before leaving, Vanessa asks how sure the heroine is in her decision to give them the baby? Juno reassures the girl, saying that she would give him to them right now, but it's necessary to wait a little. Vanessa is genuinely happy and hugs her husband. Winter is coming. Polly tries to be nice to Juno, but she refuses the invitation to the movie because she has to go to an ultrasound. Along with the girl, Bren and Leah show up for the checkup. The ultrasound specialist is happy that the child will be raised by adults. Bren stands up for Juno and says that the woman should do her job and not draw any conclusions. 
Having taken the results of the research, the girl comes home to her guardians. Vanessa is not at home, so Juno gives the photos to Mark, who works from home. The girl says that she doesn't know the sex of the baby, she wants it to be a surprise for Vanessa and her husband. Mark decides to give the girl to listen to his favorite records, after which they start talking about the best horror movies. The heroes decide to watch one of the movies to see who is right. Mark compliments the girl, and at this time Vanessa comes home. The woman is shocked by the presence of Juno, but still considers the pictures of the child. The couple tells her that they will not have a celebration before the birth, as they have already been cheated once. Juno sympathizes with the baby's caregivers and promises that she won't do such a bad thing to them. The heroine returns home and tells Bran about the time she spent with Mark. The woman advises not to go there again, especially if Vanessa is not home, as it looks very strange. Juno has a fight with his stepmother and decides to visit Polly. The guy is happy to see her and admits that he missed their hangouts too. Polly says that he will like Juno even in the last month of her pregnancy. Meanwhile, Vanessa chooses between cheesy and yolk colors to create a nursery. Mark doesn't understand why they should rush into it without knowing the sex of the baby, but the woman argues that decorating the nursery is an important process for any mom. Walking around the shopping center, Liat and Juno notice Vanessa, who is very cute playing and chatting with children. Soon the heroine encounters the woman at the elevator and offers to touch her belly. Vanessa gets frustrated that she can't feel the baby's movements, and Juno suggests that she can talk to it to elicit a reaction. The heroine's idea works, which makes Vanessa absolutely delighted. Spring is coming. Bren is restitching clothes for Juno, whose belly has gotten even bigger. Meanwhile, the heroine continues to communicate with Mark, but now on the phone. Having lunch with Leah, Juno learns that Polly is going to go to the prom with Katerina. The heroine becomes jealous of the guy, but denies it in every possible way. Juno finds Polly and gets angry with him, still denying that she is in love with the guy. The guy replies that the heroine has broken his heart and is acting like a child, but he continues to hang out with her anyway. Upset, Juno decides to go to Mark's house to calm down. A man is excited by her arrival and shows her a collection of comic books. One of them is about a pregnant superheroine, and it comforts Juno, who thinks she's fat and clumsy. Mark turns on the records to the girl, and tells her that he danced to one of the songs at the prom. The man decides to show Juno what it was like and unexpectedly says he's going to leave Vanessa. Juno is upset by the idea, as she realizes that the good family that was supposed to raise her child will be broken up. Mark claims that he is not ready to be a father and never had a desire to become one, unlike Vanessa. Juno pleads with the man not to divorce his wife, but he completely fails to listen to her. In the kitchen, Vanessa comes across a crying heroine and asks what is going on. Mark explains that he is not ready to become a father, but his wife believes that this is just temporary excitement that will pass. However, the man insists that everything is happening too fast, and it scares him. Vanessa does not believe that the spouse is ready to give up her and the child for the illusion and desire to become a rock star. Unable to withstand the heat of passion, Juno runs away from home and does not understand what she should do next. The girl cries in the car, unable to survive what has happened. Juno realizes that now she will be all alone, with a child in need of no one, and there is no way to fix it. In the evening, the heroine realizes what she should do and decides to write a note for Vanessa and Mark. Juno slips the letter under the door and leaves without letting the couple say a word to her. Having relieved her soul, the girl goes back to her home while Mark and his spouse deal with the divorce and relocation. At home, Juno tells her father that she is beginning to lose faith in people. Mac explains that two people can only be happy together for a lifetime if they put effort into it and want their love to last. The man says that the most important thing in a relationship is to accept the other with all his faults. After listening to her father, Juno realizes that she already has such a man in her life, but she just hasn't noticed him before. Mac jokingly says that it is him, though he realizes that his daughter is probably referring to a man. Juno informs him that she needs to go somewhere for a while to take care of some business. The next day, Polly sees a request to check the mailbox. Having opened it, the guy finds many boxes of his favorite tic-tac and realizes that this is a kind of declaration of love from Juno. 
This realization pleases Polly, who has been in love with the heroine for a long time. The guy goes for a run and sees Juno coming to him across the field. The girl apologizes for her terrible behavior and confesses her love to Polly. The guy says that it is mutual and his deepest dream has come true. Afterwards, the heroes kiss and Leah happily watches it. Returning home, Juno realizes that her water broke and Mac and Bren hurry to take the girl to the hospital. At the birth with the heroine are Leah and Bren, who support her in every possible way. Because he had an important race. However, the boy still found out about the event and rushed to the hospital right after the competition. Vanessa, who had been waiting for this event all her life, came to the hospital to pick up her son. On the wall in the nursery, the woman hung that very note, Vanessa, if you still want to, then, I'm in. Juno. It was summer. After picking up her guitar one sunny afternoon, Juno rode her bike to Polly's. The couple started playing songs for each other, realizing that their happy story was just beginning. This is the end of the movie. Thank you all for watching this video to the end. Give this video a like. Write in the comments what you think about this movie and see you in new videos.